again. And the purpose of tonight is to hear from uh, Judith and Julie, see if there's any questions that the council have before we move to discuss approving it and move to discuss extending the contract for a period of time to allow us to utilize the skills of the strategic planners and be able to keep us on track that first full year. So I'm going to mute myself and turn this over to Judith and Julie, unless Erin has something she wants to add right now. And I have to say, Erin has done the, the bulk of the work with working with Judith and Julie to coordinate things. So thank you so much. Thank you so much, Anne, and really great to see you all. I know, you know, as, as I speak for Judith here for a moment, that we really enjoyed our time, not only in Bluff, but in the many months that we worked so closely together. So thank you for this opportunity to, to see you all again. I'm sure we're both going to be back to town one day soon. Judith, I didn't know if you wanted to, to say hi to everybody briefly as, as we get going. Very brief. Hi, we've got <clears throat> big business to discuss, but I think, I, you know, clearly I second what Julie said. It was a great experience to sort of be in and to feel your sense of community and, and the ways in which you're building community and looking to the future of this newly incorporated town. So it was an honor to be part of that. I have a really short uh, uh, PowerPoint that I'd like to present. Will I be allowed to do that? Yes, go ahead. Well, let's see. Here we go. Can you see that? Let's see. Let me just show. That's it? Yes. All right. Very good. I just wanted to take a moment to review with you all. Um, the process that we went through was about seven months. And our process is uh, with Pathway, we use uh, also uh, something that Focused Momentum has developed and for many years has been able to offer this really excellent way for organizations to develop a strategic plan. So we began with an assessment and that really ran November through January. Um, if many of you remember, there were there were many ways that we were gathering information from the community. Um, we went, we moved to strategy creation, and that was a day long meeting on January 26th. And um, I mean, honestly, I have to thank the whole group of um, town leaders for making sure that we had the right people in the room at the right time. It was um, really an excellent conversation and what we came out from that day, I'll, I'll also talk a little bit more about. Um, the next day, the council met and we spent a few hours together continuing to talk about the long range vision. And then after that, we moved into plan development and integration. And that was February through April, working in small groups. Um, led by the design team, which was your strategic planning committee, your town leaders. And then um, April 27th, we met uh, for our final large group session integration. Um, and then uh, moving on to plan approval. Just to remind you all, we, we interviewed a great large group of town leaders. We had excellent conversations with um, many of you. We uh, put a community survey out and we had an incredibly large 97 folks responded. And then we had also had in November, we did do a town hall meeting. Um, we were really pleased with the responses. We learned a lot and I think we're able to bring to the group in the assessment process, the information that we all needed to to hear and to align ourselves around. Mm -hmm. Our vision of success as a town really came out in these uh, core areas that we found where, you know, we're interested in local sustainability, the infrastructure of the town, town services, government services, community building was important, a sense of community and belonging, 
the business community really stro spoke strongly about their need for really um, coming together with the town and you know uh, understanding how they could maybe work together more closely. The Cooperative Cultural Center, of course, was a big topic of conversation. Um, talked about a bit about heritage and historic preservation, and then of course, protecting the land and the landscape. So in all these ways, what the group came together in uh, that creation session around was planning for mindful growth, supporting improved livability, culture and community connection, and developing a sustainable town government. So these were our three core big bucket areas that everybody felt like was important, uh, so important to make sure that we had a plan around each of these key large um, important areas. When we came together in the strategic direction, what we found was this was uh, a way for us to move forward with strategic milestones and the specific things that had to happen in these areas is something that we really worked through at the integration session. So while the plan itself, as um, probably all of you have seen and have, the, have um, an opportunity to review, this one page is really where the uh, government needs to begin and start their work and sort of that, those bigger areas of things that need to be done. I was really proud of the town for the work they did, not only around um, the specific things that folks talked about around in the assessment, but also around mission, vision, and values. And I, I think that there is so much shared agreement and community connection in Bluff that um, you're moving forward in with, with a great strong foundation for the future. I, I don't know that it may, would make any sense for us to share the whole strategic plan, but we do have this plan at a glance. So as you can see, those three key initiatives at the top, those are the three core areas that were developed out. And what we found is um, in those core areas, there were main goals, objectives, and outcomes that we were able to share in this plan at a glance. And so, for example, in sustainable town government, those first four areas, community health and safety, organizational effectiveness, elected leadership, natural resource management, are all part of the sustainable town government initiative. Moving to the next one, improved livability, community, culture and connection, We have parks, whoops, parks, recreation and sustainability, active transportation, culture, events, and welcoming community. And then in our mindful growth area, we have affordable housing, expand, diversify economic opportunities, and preserve environmental resources. This is absolutely really important that the community came together and working in small group really found these core areas to share and build from to make sure that your plan for the next five, five years out is one that um, the community feels aligned around. So I just wanted to, and I can Let's see, stop sharing so that we can come back together. I just really wanted to share that piece of the work that we did and mm -hmm. knowing that the plan itself is many pages and was developed with so much care. Um, it has an invitation for the community to engage in alignment and to really to work to help the, the rest of the town, whether it be government, business, um, community members, cooperative cultural center um, leaders to really work together and come together in a way that uh, we know you as a, as a community and as a town believe you, you can. Um, 
Judith, is there anything you have? I don't see Judith on here, but I know she's here. Is there anything you have to add or um, to talk about as well? I, yeah, I think just quickly, Julie, I, I'd, I'd make a couple of points. One is that I think that given the composition and the participation of people in the plan, it really also builds on a lot of history and a lot of things that people had started and were working to push forward. So there are a whole category of things that, you know, if you wanted to do a completion bucket, there are people who, who are really committed to completing things that they were really active in getting started with. And, you know, the CCC is one of those, the bike paths and trails, there are numerous others. Um, I think that's one thing. And then I think there are also some things that are foundational in the plan. I think that the, the this notion of having moved from being a, what were you, a, a district under the, in, in San Juan County to becoming an incorporated town with a lot of people just pitching in to get a lot of stuff done to now starting to bring some structure to that townness. Um, and I think that getting that org structure together, which that first initiative has started with and clarifying, you know, the roles, the relationships between the different players, kind of the SOPs and the who does what and how do people, you know, talk to each other. I think those are going to be some really important foundations and, um, and quick wins. And there are lots of plans as well that I think will be quick wins that we're so close to being finished that getting those plans completed and started up will be um important. And then I also think that the, the engagement, I want to just say quickly that the engagement of Utah Dene Bakea from the time that we first started talking about this and, and some of the challenges that had been around to the representation that we seem to have during the strategic assessment at the design at the strategy creation session and certainly at the integration session was quite um, I thought that was quite impressive. And I know that you did Anne and 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 Aaron and Jim, when everyone continued to do work between those sessions to make that happen, and I think that's going to be a an important thing to keep you know to keep up as you move forward. So those are those are kind of the quick points that I would I would make about the plan and moving to a next level of detail, maybe. Um, but I think Anne said it so well in her in in her invitation, which is an invitation to everybody to implement the plan because um, it doesn't matter who you elect next. It's going to take a lot of hands and, you know, including a few hires, but also a lot of community volunteers. Oh, that's great. Thank you, Judith. You know, we are um, certainly open for any questions that uh, anybody may have. If there's anything around the strategic planning process or anything that you'd like to um, address with um, the council or um, us um, around the plan itself. So does anyone on the council have a question or thought about the plan? Brant? Uh, yeah, I, I do. Um, I just want to thank you both for guiding us through this process that comes out to being reflective, responsive, and decisive. Uh, I thought it was a great process and uh, we needed help doing that. And you you really uh, filled the bill. So thank you very much. You're very, very welcome, Jim. Thank you. Welcome Brand back, ladies. We missed y'all for the last month or two since we hadn't seen y'all. We did so much together. And I want to echo Jim's um, thanks about this process and about the product that we ended up with. I really believe that if you want to be somewhere in the future, you have to define where you want to be and then build your ordinances back or your actions back to where you are. So I, I can see this taking us well into the future. So thank you and welcome back um, electronically tonight. <laughs> Luann? Um, yeah, so I just uh, want to say that the timing was great for you guys to step in. We're almost, you know, we're pushing on five years now and with you guys coming into the system, you brought in a whole bunch more community members. Uh, there were a lot of people that joined us and are working on different parts. And then we have, what, five people running for the two seats on our commission. So um, we just have, you know, support to keep pushing along. So earlier, I think it would have been too soon because we, we got our own general plan, you know, the general plan in place, mm -hmm. lots of ordinances in place and whatnot. But 
Um, so I think your timing was great. And I appreciate your work on it. Oh, well, thank you. Thank you. We, we uh, pre really appreciated the opportunity, as we've said. It's really been just such a pleasure. Linda, do you have anything or are you okay? Um, I thought it was really well done, the whole process, uh, the engagement, um, the goals. Um, it really set up things for this, for the end plan. So thank you. Sure. Well, I would just... <laughs> No. I was just going to say, um, everybody said it so well that there's really not much more to say, except I feel like this is something that we can pass off and really work on, which is one reason that Aaron and I had asked uh, Pathways to give us another little chunk of time for the council to, to look at, to guide us through some additional uh, kind of touchstones, like okay, you know, it's three months, what have you done? Oh, you didn't do this, well, you're not on track. And I think for the first year that will be very helpful because as Lou said, we have two seats that are open. So we'll be losing Jim and Brant and it will be a good time for us to have that roadmap with, with some experience and, and two with not so much experience. Aaron, did you have anything you wanted to add? I just echo what everyone else said. It was a very collaborative experience and we have a very detailed document in which to move forward with. So thank you for helping us organize that. So this uh, do we need a would we need a vote to accept this? We would if one of us hadn't dropped the ball and failed to put and vote into the sentence. So I did not catch it until we were talking and I looked down at the agenda and thought, oh my, the second half of my thought didn't make it. So we well, maybe it'll make it next week along with the extension for pathway to help guide us over uh, next, uh, however long you were kind of contemplating. Yeah, I think that, and I apologize to everyone for dropping that. I just, um, did not realize it, and we so we can't vote on it. I think it's safe to say that um, I haven't heard any one appear to be saying I'm not voting for this. So Judith and Julie, I think our next step will be to actually take our vote and then vote on your um, proposal. The one thing I would say about the proposal is individually, we've had discussions about does it make more sense to start that um, touching base in November once we know who the two new council members are, because sure. then it's, that's the perfect time we're bringing in two new people and losing two people with experience. And between the seven of us then would be a good time to mm -hmm. move, start moving that in. Yeah. Agreed. So again, I apologize everyone for not being able to do the vote, but um, Judith and Julie, it's been fabulous. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks so much all. Good to see you all. Enjoy your evening. You're welcome to stay on or jump off. So, all right. <clears throat> then we'll move to number two, which is a discussion and vote on insect spraying contract mm -hmm. for the town offices and buildings. So, Aaron, would you be able to cover that um, in terms of what our choices are at this point? Yeah, so uh, Malia was able to obtain uh, a couple quotes. Uh, essentially, what we're looking for is monthly uh, pest control at the Bluff Community Center building. Um, as this, you know, folks are in the office, I think there's some, you know, additional plans with this building in the near future. It'd be beneficial to have routine pest control. Um, typically, with this kind of ongoing thing, you know, we're not talking hundreds of hundreds of dollars or thousands of dollars but we did obtain a couple different quotes. You should have received uh, that overview in your agenda packet. And it would be uh, my recommendation that you all would uh, choose the uh, most, uh, or I should say the least expensive option, which would be new technology solutions, who are offering a quote of $25 a month uh, to service this building. 
do you want us to make a selection or simply approve uh, that we go ahead with uh, whatever plays out? You know, having reviewed those when they came in and then today, since the services that they'd each be offering are the same, the price differential is huge. And I would recommend following Aaron's recommendation and Malia's recommendation that we use new technology because they were considerably less expensive, but they also service the senior center for the county. And so it makes it very efficient for us to get the service, which is, a, I think, a part of why the fee was a little lower. I'll make a motion that we do that. I'll second. Second. Yeah, go ahead. Lynn. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? All right, it's unanimous. And boy, those bugs need to get out of there. It's really pretty bad. All right, the number three. We, we, we live in a desert, don't forget. And I know. So, I, I remind myself. I remember that. we had this discussion a couple of years back, but they just it's no amount of cleaning when you live in a desert. You just have to protect your building. What was that word, cleaning? <laughs> it's clean. That place is clean. Oh, it's no, that place is clean. I'm not talking about that place. <laughs> anyway, yeah, so thanks for, thanks for getting those quotes and stuff. That's great. Yeah, yeah Malia's. Uh, Collins has done a really good job, and Malia and Aaron are certainly working well together, so let's not change it. Number three, discussion and vote to support Utah Dene Bakea's Bears Ears Summer Gathering. You can tell that this last couple of weeks have just been um, hectic, and I apologize for not getting this resolution out sooner than at the 11th hour, but their event is this weekend. Um, I did gather individual donations from the council members and those were handed off to UDB today through their intern Sam Reeves at the community center. So that is our monetary private contribution. Our in-kind contribution is we are loaning the folding chairs to uh, Utah Dene Bakea for the event up on the Bears Ears. And Sam Reeves was in today with uh, Malia Collins and another intern, and they counted the chairs. There are chairs also at the uh, Cooperative Cultural Center that they'll be taking. There's approximately 60 of those. We have approximately 100, but they have a specific count. And so Sam is uh, has accepted responsibility for getting them up there and getting them back in good condition and in one piece. And I really don't know who wants a metal chair that's miserably uncomfortable. So I expect that they'll all come back. Um, did you have a chance to read the resolution or should I have Erin please share her screen with it? It's just a one pager. Let's look at it on the screen, please. All right. And for those people on the phone, I'll go ahead and read it. It's a resolution supporting Utah Dene Bakea's 2023 Bears Ears Summer Celebration. Whereas the town of Bluff, a Utah municipality, and Utah Dene Bakea, a 5013C, entered into a partnership in 2021 to acquire and develop the former Bluff Elementary School. Whereas the partnership is ongoing with the renaming of the building, the Cooperative Cultural Center with the mission of rejuvenating the jointly owned building, operationalizing a model working relationship between a local government and an indigenous led nonprofit and supporting each other's common goals. Whereas UDB sponsors an annual Bears Ears Summer Gathering to bring together indigenous communities of the Greater Bears Ears region to pay homage to the landscape that has been memorialized by her descendants' prayers, traditions, and ceremonies. Whereas Bears Ears has always shown her love by providing the people with, and I don't know how to say the word, it's I-I-N-A. Ina. Ina, thank you. Food, medicine, hunting, and protection. 
And whereas the town of Bluff resolves to support its partnership, its partner, UDB, and all indigenous people in this gathering through both in-kind contributions by the council on behalf of the community at large and through private financial contributions. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the town of Bluffs, one, that the town of Bluffs supports Utah Geneva Kea's ninth annual Bears Ears Summer Gathering scheduled for the weekend of July 21st through July 23rd, 2023. Then approved by the Bluff Town Council, Bluff, Utah, on this 18th day of July, 2023, by the following vote. And then there's our names with yes, no, abstain, and absent for me to mark off. Wonderful. Make a motion to approve it as presented. Second. Any further discussion? Then all in favor say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? It's unanimous. And I just want to uh, be sure that the public is aware that no uh, tax dollars went into this. Um, Luann raised that, and that was a good reminder. So those folks who've contributed, there were a couple community members and then the council. So. Uh, I don't know what the end result was because some came in a sealed envelope, which I did not open, but everything made it to uh, Sam Reeves. Then moving to number four, a discussion and vote on AmeriCorps project for the Cooperative Cultural Center with Community Rebuilds. Um, this is a little vague, but the reason I have it on here for a vote is that in working with AmeriCorps, years one and two, we were very fortunate that housing was provided out at St. Christopher's Mission because St. Christopher's Mission was in the mix of with uh, Utah State University Extension and, oh my gosh, there's a huge raven. Um, sorry. And so uh, the mission always provided the housing. Well, this proposal doesn't include the mission. When we did the exit interview, meaning the operative three of us, uh, Joe Hubbard, Reagan White, Salucci, and myself, AmeriCorps suggested to the town that the town take a little different approach th this next year if we wanted a group and we partner with someone, a different type of organization, and they uh, recommended community rebuilds up in Moab because one, community rebuilds has a presence in Bluff, and Secondly, we would be able to share uh, a project or projects with Community Rebuilds who already has had uh, projects approved. So Ricky Epperson, who's the executive director, and I have been talking, and it was kind of unclear to me over the last month or two talking to uh, AmeriCorps, like what exactly was the plan, because I knew that Community Rebuilds really is focusing on housing, and we don't really have uh, a plan for housing, but Ricky and I were hopeful that we'd get, that they would get at least two qualified applicants for Community Rebuilds here in Bluff. Well, despite Ricky's best attempt and my best attempt, we have not been able to come up with qualified applicants. And so for this next year, Community Rebuilds will be focusing on Moab, but they are um, they have projects up there. So our project is totally undefined other than to say we would have four weeks of the 10 to 12 weeks that AmeriCorps is available. We'd have four of those weeks here in Bluff. We would put in everything we can think of like we did before, like, you know, we admit it mitigation or Naxos weed mitigation, um, working at the CCC, doing some uh, labor, some manual labor in and out. Um, anything that we can really think of, just like we did before. We provide the supervision for our four weeks. The catch to this though is um, we have to provide housing. So I was kind of stuck in a rock and a hard place because all we're doing is Ricky and I, if um, are, we're just putting in a concept. There's no approval, there's no 
proposal yet. There's no anything. It's just the concept. We want to team up together, and these are the projects that we're looking at. Then if AmeriCorps says, this looks doable, and we'll have a team in January, then at that point, we would be going to UDB, to the Design Review Committee, and saying, does this work for you at the CCC in and out project? Um, or one other option that had been tossed out was working on the score up house for additional housing. So there are all kinds of, of ideas. But the, the reason I'm raising it now is I don't want to spend Ricky's time, AmeriCorps' time, or my time if I'm going to get a no on the financial piece. Housing would be $4,000 for four weeks at the score up house. And that would be if the work were done at the CCC in a real world with everyone's approval, that would be divided as a proportionate expense because they'd be doing the work there. But if the council doesn't want me to go any further with investigating, I'm fine. I just want to let Ricky know and AmeriCorps know that we don't feel that the housing piece of it is something we can do. So questions, Brant, you've got a question? Um, you know, I, I like moving forward with a little bit of uncertainty. And, and I'm after working with those guys last year, I feel like that that's a good investment for the amount of work that will get done. So I think the cost per hour, per, you know, uh, to commit 4000 um, And I do want to get community rebuilds in our community the next year. And I think that'll put our foot in the door for that. So I'll stop right there. Just listen. Anyone else have a thought or a question? Um, I'm pretty much with Brad on that. Do you need to vote, Mayor? Well, Lou, Lou has something. Oh, sorry. Well, I, just, I don't really have an opinion one way or the other. I know that it always comes in a really crunch time when we don't have a lot of time to supervise. Is this again during the holidays? November and December? It would be January, February, March. Oh, well, that's better. Yeah, and our time would probably be um, determined more by what Community Rebuilds is able to do with weather. So it could be um, we start off thinking it's going to be January. We get to December and go, oops, we're going to, you know, move it around. But it would be four, four weeks during that time frame. And how many kids? Eight to ten, I believe. Okay. They're always a little sketchy. It's... Really, the range is 8 to 12, but they tend to be focusing on more of the 8 to 10, and that's kind of what I'm, I counted on when uh, Adrian Caesar and I were looking at the housing and what the cost would be. And we did get a break from yesterday on, on the house. You get the whole house and the kitchen and all that is included. So we it seems, it seems like a decent price. Can they do ceiling removal, Mayor? They can do whatever we put into that uh, final proposal. What are you talking about put ceiling removal in there. Yeah, they can. They can do all that. And so, to me, it just it makes sense, and it's a good use of time. Plus, it builds the relationship with AmeriCorps because at some point uh, we may need them for even bigger projects for the whole period. Motion to approve going forward on this. Second. Any further discussion? Then all in favor say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Then it's unanimous. And I will let uh, Ricky Epperson and NCCC know that we're moving forward. And before there's a proposal or an acceptance, I will be bringing it back, but I'll probably take about a good month or so to get that put together with Ricky. And then we'll throw the kitchen sink in there. Thank you, Mayor. Good job. You're welcome. Well, thanks to Ricky. She's kept me on track. All right. All right. Number five, discussion and vote on the termination of the contract with NetForce for technology services and options for providers. So moved. <laughs> Aaron, I'm going to turn this over to you so that if there are questions about why we need to do this or why we should do this. There's a motion on the floor. <laughs> But it's open for discussion. It's a, it's a good motion. We're good. Time to discuss. Go for it, Aaron. 
Thank you. Alrighty. So I appreciate your support. I know this has been something um, I think all of us have had some issues with our current uh, technology or our current IT provider. Um, these issues have really kind of come to a head within the last month. One thing that, that perhaps um, I might recommend that we make uh, an amendment to the motion, essentially the contract would be up on November 1st. If you were to vote to terminate it now, it's a 90 day period, which would be um, right around October. So if you wanted to just not uh, extend the contract or not continue the contract, that might be beneficial in that it will take us a little bit of time to find a new IT provider. Um, I will talk about that in just a second. Uh, but also, if you wanted to just you know say nope we're done a month early that's okay too uh you did have one one year 12 month contract with uh with netforce uh i do think that we will be able to find a reasonable it provider um anytime in the next three to four months uh so it's really up to you all if you wanted to end the contract a month early or if you just want to let it ride out one benefit to letting it ride until November is it might be a little less um, overlap with training council members and then having new council members coming on very quickly thereafter. Um, we will keep all the same equipment. You all own the laptops. We own the computers that are in the uh, Bluff Community Center building in the town offices. We own the cameras and all of the equipment that we have. So um, the Technology wouldn't be changing, and we would probably keep the same um, system that we have. So this Microsoft 365, but just with additional support and additional training. I had a very good conversation with Emory Telecom today, who does provide hosted IT services now. That's kind of a newer offering that they have. And I had a very promising conversation in which they discussed um, the offerings they're able to provide, as well as they uh, touted that they have a very good working relationship with the Department of Technology Services through the state of Utah. Now, this would be incredibly beneficial because Emory Telecom is able to be in our area and help us with any in-person needs, but they have a really good working relationship with DTS, who would be able to get us changed over to a .gov domain, which is going to be required. And so, all this to say, I think you have a couple different avenues to go down in terms of who you want to go to, but it sounds like you all are, in, sorry, I shouldn't have put words around, it sounds like you're all on the same track as to we don't need to continue uh, down with NetForce. So I think the only thing to decide is how quickly you want to end that relationship, whether it is a month early or whether it is letting the contract go until November 1st and then just calling it. Brant, did you have a question? Um, I was going to amend my motion, Mayor, um, just to say let's let our contract run out. That'll give us time to get everything straight. So that was that was all. Thank you, Aaron. Good job. And, and Brant, I didn't mean to disregard your motion, but I thought it was more just being humorous as opposed to a real motion. So it sorry. Both, but we can we can do it officially if you'd like for me to be more formal. I'll be happy to. No, nope, that, that's fine. Jim seconded it. So any further discussion? All right. All in favor of letting the NetForce contract expire on November 1st and look for a new provider? Say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? All right. Then thank you all, Aaron. Thanks for your work on this. And Emory sounds like a real possibility. All right, then number six, discussion of fire restrictions. So after our meeting last time, last week, I uh, emailed with Tammy Gallegos, and what Tammy said was that the state hasn't taken a formal position on restrictions uh, in, in any certain area and that the county was holding off to pass anything until they saw what the state did. Um, and while we have the ability and the jurisdiction to be able to pass our own restrictions, what Tammy suggested was that we hold off a little bit and see what the state does because it apparently, um, these are my words, irritated the state that the county jumped ahead when they jumped ahead and passed some restrictions without the state making the first move. 
Um, I, I'm concerned myself just personally that there's, it's so dry that there are not restrictions other than needing to get the, the burn permit and do those things. But what do people think? Do you want to uh, go through and look at the first and second stage? Do you want to sit back another few days and see if the state and the county do anything? Lou Ann, from a fire perspective, what are y'all thinking? Yeah, I, I think that it's smart for Bluff to do their own just because we don't match up very well with the county or the state. We've, we never have matched up with Monticello and blending and so on. So I think it's smart for us to do it. But again, I'd like to have that recommendation from the fire department. Well, as I said last week, that um, Chief Lott would support whatever we did. And mm -hmm. I, I don't know that we're going to get anything stronger than that. So I sent out what the actual fire restrictions were. Um, and, a, and then we did this the last couple of years on the stage one, which the restrictions um, include the following no open fires of any kind except within established public facilities or in permanently constructed fire pits at private homes where running water is present. Two, no smoking except in an enclosed vehicle, trailer, or building. A developed recreation site or while stopped in an area that is free or paved, it, that is paved or free from dry vegetation. Three, no fireworks, tracer ammunition, or other pyrotechnic devices, including exploding targets. Four, no cutting, welding, or grinding metal in areas of dry vegetation. Five, no operating a motorcycle, chainsaw, ATV, or other small internal combustion en engines without an approved and working spark arrestor. Uh, so that's stage one. Stage two is everything in stage one, but then no open fires of any kind. Compressed or liquid gas grill stove, fire pits with the shutoff valve are allowed with proper clearance. And then there's a section that they call special restrictions, which it doesn't have any suggestions, but I assume it means you can write your own. So that's what we have done in the past to look at. Yeah, and I think that I would be in favor of moving to stage one, which keeps them all in the controlled areas with the hose present, you know, no fireworks, the, the basic stuff, uh, I think would be very appropriate. Is that a motion? Sure, we can make that a motion. <laughs> I'm going to second lose motion, Mayor, I, and they'll catch up. The stage one will catch up to us, but let's go ahead and protect our our, um, our town. Any further discussion? Is it all in favor say aye? Aye. 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 Anyone opposed? It's unanimous. Then I'll use pretty much the same um, one is last year with the stage one that I just read and we'll get that out and on the website and do a blast tomorrow. Yeah, and it would be good. I don't remember what we did last time, but the posters and you know some sign on that board that says that it's high fire danger um, and move that to high fire danger if it's not already. But it is. Something there, okay, something there that says, uh, you know, that we have no open fires, whatever, you know, put that right there at the post office and so on. Yeah, and because there were fireworks on Friday and that was dealt with by um, a number of people, the information I got was somewhat confusing and I probably put out incorrect information about what the what was going on, but the bottom line is there were fireworks, the person wouldn't stop. And so that's kind of a reminder that people need to know we're dry and hot and we'll get the blast out and and take it from there. Anything else on that? We're so hot, temperature-wise, it's incredible. People, I can't believe they would not realize how much fire danger there is. Well, and, and I think it's a good reminder to all of us that when we have guests or, or people if you're doing lodging to remind folks, this is what we've got, it's a ban, you know, don't have fireworks and shoot off things. But 
And just, I would like to just clarify that that on Friday um, wasn't a, a guest. It was a kid in town and it was a perfect timing to educate that, that kid. It was like no idea that a fire danger at that age. So it was um, a really good timing. It was much better than having a fire start and creep around the neighborhood. So it all went really well, but we need, you know, we need the adults and the visitors to know too. It's so hot. I don't know why anybody wants to, any more heat, but anyway, uh, that I, I don't want it to go out that there was a big problem with the, a, 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 a guest to our town. It, it was not, it was a, a, a young kid that didn't know any better. Great. All right, then moving to number seven, acknowledgement of the acquisition of Cottonwood Canyon by Wildlands Conservancy and the work by Josh Ewing and Jennifer Stoll. On Friday of last week, Wildlands Conservancy and uh, Gary and Lawrence Guyman signed off on the sale of Cottonwood Canyon to the Conservancy and I think they, everyone at the closing felt like it was a little anticlimactic. Um, Jennifer Stoll was there, the Guymans, um, Josh, and I, I think people, it's like, you should have fireworks and you should do all these fun things. But I think as a community, this is one thing that I find hard to, to to locate someone who disagreed with protecting that entire space. And so a big kudos to Wildlands Conservancy and to um, Josh Ewing for all his hard work and Jennifer Stoll for her work. I know there were other people involved, but I wasn't privy to the detail, but that's protected. And uh, the plan right now is soft, but it looks like around September 23rd, Wildlands Conservancy will come down and have a, like a community work day and probably a celebration to honor the Guymans for their commitment to the community and just um, to really making that plan affordable and available to Wildlands Conservancy. So kind of keep the 23rd open just in case. Brant? Um, what a happy, happy event. Um, what a huge, huge win for Bluff. And for the future of Bluff and for Wildlands, I'm just just overwhelmed by one piece at a time, and uh, and it just goes to show you what hard work. Thank everyone involved. Yep, Jim. Uh, yeah, I just think that is fantastic. This is the, like the one of the signatures, uh, main signatures of the town is the wash. It's it's uh, and the canyon, Cottonwood Canyon is. Um, major drainage into the San Juan, it's a major uh, desert uh, drainage, and it's it's just so beautiful and such a model uh, for preservation. I, I, I think it's fantastic. Thank you, Jennifer, and thank you, Josh. The two gentlemen from Wildlands Conservancy were, one was the executive director, and then one was the person working on this project we're just amazing and both of them are interested in moving to bluff so <laughs> that, that was kind of nice uh the one thing that i would really like to have us think about is if that work day is in september or whenever it is i'd really like us to think about what we can do as a community to honor the, the guymans and wildlands conservancy and i think if there's going to be a work day maybe what we can do is uh, get people to contribute some food so we've got food out there and and be able to maybe throw a jar up for fundraising for wildlands conservancy because they'll have now the the obligation to keep to one uh, kind of tidy it up and get it ready with a small kiosk or whatever they're going to do and so funding is still necessary to move it forward and oh one last thing Joyce Martini's son works for Wildlands Conservancy. So it's a really nice personal tie to, the, to Bluff. If anyone wants to see the book from Wildlands Conservancy, I'll try to bring it into the office and leave it. It shows all their other work. It's just amazing. 
All right, moving to number eight, status of the fiscal year 2023 audit. Um, Linda, do you want to talk about kind of what's starting? Yes, uh, right after July 1st, Ann and I got emails from Larson and Company who, do, who have been doing our audits for the last three years. And they it starts by um, Ann and I authorizing them to start the audit and giving them access to all our accounts and our accounting. And so um, right now, our accountant, Dave Sanderson, is working with Polaris on the infrastructure for the audit, which includes um, depreciation, fortunately, which I would never be able to figure out, <laughs> but they're uh, good at it. So what will happen is um, they're figuring out the infrastructure probably mid-August. We, Ann and I will work with their accountant and their auditor so that they're looking at our, what we've done um, two different ways. And so it takes, they said it would take about a week. It usually takes two weeks to get them all the information that they need and answer all their questions. So basically um, the process has started. So, Linda, that's the audit last year's books. Is that correct? Yes. Um, the From July 1st, 2022 until June 30th, 2023. Excellent. So, any questions? So... According to what Larson has said, they'll do. They'll start the virtual audit with Linda and myself on August seventh through August eleventh. And like Linda said, it usually does take two weeks. Not because, um, well, not really because of anything that's tangible. It's just that the first week we we spend getting all the stuff to them, and then the second week is they'll be doing follow-ups on the information they got and the documents they got. So it's a hard couple of weeks, but it will be over again for a few months. <laughs> Any questions for Linda about the audit? Just thank yous to both of y'all for the hard work. Thank you. Mm. All right, the financial report is number nine. Linda, that's also yours. The financial report is the bills that we pay every month that um, that we need to approve. I wrote them differently this year because it is the end of the fiscal year. And I've been w working with Dave Sanderson, our accountant. Um, there are certain bills that have to be dated June 30th, the end of the audit. And a lot of these bills are bills that I normally pay the next month, it would pay July 1st, but um, the, this covers work that's done um, before the end of the fiscal year, including the employee's work, um, bills that come in. We even had two bills come in that were road work that were from um, April of 2022. And so all those things needed to be dated correctly. So I've been working with Dave, who's uh, really knowledgeable about to make sure that things are done correctly, because that makes his um, life a little simpler. So, um, so the way I did this was I the bills that had to be dated June thirtieth. Um, I listed those. Not. Normally, those would be the next month on the first. And there were a few bills from June that didn't make it into the last financial statement because they came in after our meeting. And then after that are the July bills. So are there any questions? And can we get approval to pay? Oh. I'll make a motion to approve as presented, Linda, or Mayor. 
Second. And I just have a question. Um, Maxwell Asphalt is the airport, is that right? Right. Okay. And then is the rest of the airport paid? Is that going along as? So, so this is something actually Aaron and I met today, I think it was. It's kind of, we have a lot going on. Uh, with Kurt from UDOT and um, I think Sherlyn um, Benyon, um, the piece that, that Maxwell Asphalt has finished was finished in June. And so that kind of complicated things because they would have liked, Maxwell Asphalt would have liked everything paid at once you know, probably end of July or August, but because this piece of work was done in June, we had to pay it separately. Okay, so uh, JVation and Maxwell, they're all satisfied with, with, they haven't billed anything other than what we've paid them, I guess. No, and they're going to be sending in separate invoices. There's, you know, three different phases, and so um, Aaron, really understands it well and I've got the basic idea so as they come in we will um, pay them okay so I think we've made the motion and right not. I'm just waiting to see if there's any further discussion all right then all in favor say aye 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 aye, aye. aye. anyone opposed it's unanimous then number 10 we need to have a work session so we can go over the election process and I don't want to go into it now because it's too complex, but the bottom line is the duties we have are going to fall over holidays and I want to get us nailed down on who's going to be here and doing this so that we're not in November scrambling. So the election process and the changes, the next step in the strategic planning, the noxious weed ordinance. Those are examples of what I'd like to get on a work session. So how does everybody look in terms of having a work session, one of those first three, two, well, not the first Tuesday, but the second or the third Tuesday, which would be the 8th or the 15th of August? You pick it. What's your schedule look like, Mayor? Well, I won't be in town or available on August 1st, so I would prefer the 8th. I'm good with that if everybody else likes it. We have a public hearing then, don't we, on the 8th? No, on the 15th. The 15th. Okay. Yep, we have a public hearing on the 15th. 8th is okay. I have down on my schedule that the 8th is the fee schedule hearing. Yeah, me too. The, that's right prior to the meeting at 530. So can't we do both? I mean, can't we have the work sure. session? Yeah, let me just check one other. I'm not sure when we have the, uh, let me just check the Bluff website. I'm not sure when our next active transportation focus group is it's that day on at four on the eighth is it mm -hmm. yeah so so that's a lot for the eighth um, let's see what what happens in the morning yeah, I think 30, what, we could do 10 30 that would work Does that work for everybody? It works. Eight, for 30, 30, yeah. yeah. Okay, then I'll get some things out. If there's something you want to add to the work session, just let me know. Then number eleven, work by um, the UDOT to begin July 2023 and end December 2023. So we received the official notice from UDOT that they were starting construction, which we all could tell because the traffic was backing up on 191. So there are three, uh, 30 miles of roadway in San Juan County, including um, 
163 State Road 261 um, with the Mulkey Dugway and State Road 316 with the goosenecks. So, of course, um, right within it is October, which is the eclipse event. And so I fired off a pretty lengthy email to our regional engineer, Jared Beard. There were a couple of things that I wanted to follow up on. And so I explained that we would have, you know, concerns in the county if we're going to be doing road work during that week. Like, what did he have a schedule? Had they worked that plan out? And, I, you know, I'm assuming that because it involves our local UDOT crew, and I've been talking with Freeman Sam at the shed, I'm assuming that Jared Beard probably in the loop, but just on the off chance that they're not. I do, although on the other hand, it could prevent the gridlock here if they stop the traffic <laughs> somewhere else and they couldn't get here. But I, um, I'm following up on that and I'll keep everybody posted when we do the eclipse meetings, but I'm, I'm hopeful they've got that on their radar because that could be kind of a mess. Anything else you want me to do on that? Well, I'm always interested in finding out what year they're going to slow speeds down in town, if that comes up um, while you're talking to you, Dot Mayor. Yeah. It's always a question that I run past Jared, and they're still waiting on, the, I think, the federal changes from uh, the Transportation Department, but I'll follow up. Lou, did you have something? Uh, yeah, I just I asked in our last uh, active transportation meeting, I asked Chris Hall about it, it, on the map, it shows it starting at Cow Canyon and going right through town. I asked her if that was accurate or if that was just a mistake on the map. But if it's not, it's a prime time just to repaint the stripes from um, from the school over getting rid of that turn lane, which only serves to speed traffic up. He said he would look and get back, and I, I haven't heard back from him. But if, if they are going to pave it, they come right away with the striping, and if they put stripes back as a to be consistent with the east side, uh, that would give a, a little safer zone for bikes and pedestrians. Okay, thank you. That's good to know. There seems to be a little bit of disconnect about kind of what they talk about in the paving, just in my mind, but I don't know if I'm accurate. No, it, it, it's all happening like that fresh strip, strip out there is painted already. They put her down and stripe it just for safety. Nighttime, you got to think about nighttime. Yeah. All right. Is there any other under number 12? Hearing no other, I'll make a motion to adjourn there. Hey, I'll our, second that. And our next meeting isn't till the 1st, August 1st. Mm -hmm. All right. All in favor, say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? All right. I'm hanging up and turning off the recorder. Have Thanks a good one. Thank you. Thank you. Bye -bye. Yes.